This is because they say that trade is a usury. Trade is an interest. Allah has permitted trade, but has forbidden riba, has forbidden usury, has forbidden interest. Those who after receiving the direction from thy Lord, desist, they shall be pardoned for the past. Their case is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who repeat the offense will be companions of the hellfire. Therein will they dwell forever. The Quran clearly states that Allah has permitted trade but has forbidden interest and riba. And those who involve themselves in riba, that is usury or interest, will be companions of the hellfire. And therein shall they dwell forever. The verse continues. The next verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 276 says, Allah will deprive riba, Allah will deprive usury of all its blessings and will give multiple increase for deeds of charity. Some Muslims may further argue that the riba mentioned in the Quran refers to riba istilaq. That is when a person gives a loan to another person to purchase his basic necessities, to fulfill the basic demands of life. If a person gives loan and then charges interest on such loan, this sort of riba, which is called as riba istalaq, has been prohibited. The other sort of riba, the other interest which the modern banks take, interest giving on loans for doing business, this the Quran does not prohibit. Let's analyze what the Quran has to say. I start my talk by reciting a few verses of the Quran. I recited the verse from Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2. Verse number 278 which says, Ya That, O you who believe, fear Allah. And give up your demands. And give up your demands of riba, that is usury or interest. In kuntum mu'mineen, if ye are indeed believers, immediately after this voice was revealed, our blood prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him. He said that I am the first person to let go, to nullify the interest which is due to my relative, Hazrat Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib. May Allah be pleased with him. Previously, in the pre-Islamic Arabia, there were two types of business that was done. One was the mudariba system. That is, a person gave loan to a mudarib, to a, a businessman, to a person who's doing trade. And whatever profit that businessman had, it was shared between the person who gave loan and the businessman. And the second type was money was given to a businessman and a fixed interest was charged on that money. When the Muslims say that the riba which is prohibited in the Quran refers to riba istila, that is interest on loan givings to basic necessities like for purchasing food, for purchasing clothes, the basic requirements, such type of riba has been prohibited. The moment the verse of Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 278 was revealed, which said that give up your demands of usury, give up your demands of riba, give up your demands of interest. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him, he was the first to nullify, he was first to let go the interest that was due to his relative. Hazrat Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, may Allah be pleased with him. No logical person, no logical Muslim can say that the beloved, the beloved relative of a prophet, Hazrat Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, may Allah be pleased with him, he gave loan to poor people for basic needs 
and in return tied interest just like what the Jews did. But natural, Hazrat Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib, may Allah be pleased with him, he gave loan to businessmen to do business. And on that, he charged a fixed interest. After this verse was revealed, whatever interest which was due to his relative was let go. And but natural, all the Muslims of that time, whoever involved themselves in interest, let go whatever interest amount was due to them. The next verse, immediately after this verse, is of Surah Bakra, chapter number 2, verse number 279, which says, after it says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanatu Allah, O you believe, fear Allah, wazaru ma baqi min al-riba, and give up what remains of a demand of usury, in kuntum mu'mineen, if you are indeed believers. And the next verse says, fa in, fa yawallo, if, but if he do it not, fa zanu bi harb min Allahi wa rasulihi, take notice, of a war from Allah and His Rasul. Wa in tuptum. But if he turn back. Wa in tuptum. But if he turn back. You can have your capital sums. The Quran clearly states that if you do not turn back from riba, take notice of a war from Allah and His Rasul. Imagine. The Quran also mentions that intoxicants are prohibited. Gambling is prohibited. But nowhere does the Quran say that though consuming intoxicants is a major sin, it does not say that if you consume intoxicants, Allah and His Rasul will wage a war against you. Neither do you indulge. If you indulge in gambling, will Allah and His Rasul wage a war against you. But there specifically the Quran says, if you involve yourself in interest, Allah and His Rasul will wage a war against you. I want to know that which Muslim today in the world, in the world today, can challenge Allah and His Rasul for a war? I want to know which Muslim, which human being today in this world, can challenge Allah and His Rasul for a war? If you involve yourself in interest, in usury, you are challenging Allah and His Rasul for a war. And the next verse of Surah Bakra, chapter number 2, verse number 280 continues, that if the debtor is in difficulty, give him time to repay until it is easy for him to repay. But if he give it in deeds of charity, that is best for you. Regarding riba, the prohibition, has also been mentioned in several hadiths. It is clearly mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 6, chapter number 48, 49, 50, and 51. That is hadith number 64, 65, 66, and 67. The first three hadiths, that's hadith number 64, 65, and 66 of volume 6 of Sahih Bukhari says, that Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she narrated that after the last verses of Surah Baqarah was revealed to Allah's Messenger, may Allah be pleased with him, may peace be upon him, he went out and repeated that in the mosque and prohibited the trade of alcohol and liquor. And the last hadith, Hadith number 67 says that the hadith was narrated by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, that the last verses of the Quran to be revealed were verses prohibiting riba. These seven verses, that is from Surah Qara, chapter number 2, verse number 275 to verse number 281, were the last seven verses 